Happy Arvel. Hello. Welcome to This Week in Australia. One of my favorite days of the week, personally. Uh, I just get to peruse the Australian subreddit, see the top posts this week, and share with you what happened. All the way from my child's bedroom in Indiana. How cool is that? <laughs> right off the bat, I mean, the top post is tipping gone mad. Which these are always funny to me as an American. Because if you think it's bad there, man. I could show you some things. Okay, let's see though. AU online store? Online store asks for tips. Okay, honestly, I've never seen that. And that's hilarious. But who the hell is tipping here? Who is tipping here? Because you don't even have that. If you never actually have to even look someone in the eyes, then there's never even that awkward moment of like feeling pressured into tipping, which is what you get here in America a lot. They'll hand you an iPad like this. They'll just hold it there and it'll say like how much you want to tip just like this right here. But I mean, if you're on your phone and you like it's literally just going to an online store. Oh, my God. Absolute none every time. That's insane. I would love to see the stats on how many people tipped this Instagram shop. It would only be people who did it by accident, I hope. You already knew we were going to see some stuff about Kohl's or Woolworths. Here we go. It says Kohl's PR is working overtime. See, I I can tell there's like an uprising down there in Australia. I can tell just by reading your guys' comments, the videos, and the subreddit every week. <laughs> People hate Kohl's. Let's see. Um, see how they're responding. $10 meal challenge. Kohl's Express sausage rolls. With sauce, of course. Plus large coffee. And finally, an orange poppy seed muffin. $9.50. That's it. To be honest, I remember the good old days where that would be considered very expensive for a freaking grocery store lunch. <laughs> Nine fifty dollars for the most basic meal you could have come up with that's all pre pre cooked and stuff. Whatever. Um Okay. I mean that wasn't a huge L, but it was pretty stupid. I'm going to read the comments. I'm curious what the comments say. <laughs> so apparently they turned off the comments in the Instagram story, but it's still up on the tech top. It says, funnily enough, it's still a massive win that it's being shared on external platforms like here for them. We're talking about them, which is sure beneficial to their social team. Honestly, I've worked in marketing for years and years, and I have to disagree. The marketing team right now is freaking out. <laughs> they are pooping their pants over calls they're getting from management. Oh, we're getting bad press about this. What were you thinking? Posting this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not about to go grab a sausage roll, a muffin, and a shitty coffee because it was posted here. If anything, it makes the social media team look desperate and weak. Yeah, I tend to agree. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just trying to get a feel in these comments for what it is about this video people don't like, and I, I think it is what I was assuming. This guy says, especially considering the earlier videos were cook a meal at home and feed your family for $10, not stop at the servo for a pre-made lukewarm pie and shit coffee for $10. That's exactly what I assumed, because I remember that old campaign about feeding. It, it, it really was like feed your whole family for $10. Now they're desperately trying to, oh, well, you can just barely scrape under $10 if you buy this sausage. That's funny. Okay, so this is kind of a funny just post. It says, my friends on the Strata Committee, I don't know what the Strata Committee is, but a new person's moving in and sent their dog CV for approval. I guess that's like a resume. So they sent in this dog, Lexi. I mean, this is a strong resume, trained to potty outdoors. Regularly groomed. The one thing I had to point out, I wasn't even going to show this, but I just had to point out it says de-sexed at six months old, which I thought was a very interesting way of saying that. De-sexed. Here in America, you'd say, like, fixed. That's what most people say. They're fixed, which I always thought was bizarre. 
Like, actually, you're breaking them. You're not fixing them. Desexed is a lot more accurate. Or they say neutered. But desexed. Very interesting. Never heard that in my life. <laughs> but I say let Lexi in. She seems very sweet. Very sweet dog. <laughs> this is absolutely classic. He says, my real estate wants us to complete inspections for them. <laughs> so he got this email. You can now complete routine inspections yourself at a time that suits you by downloading the Inspect Me app from the App Store. Simply log in and use the tenant access through Property Me. And you can post your own comments and photos. There, that is hilarious. That's so funny. They're literally wanting to not purchase an inspector. So they're making it, trying to make it seem like a good thing that, hey, you can go do it for us for free. Jeez, man. These real estate companies, and they're going too far. There's, there's already so much backlash against everything going on with housing and rent and now oh my god read the room so we got some kind of video here it says do you pay more tax than the wealthy probs and it's by jack to he hey play a game called who pays the most tax now let's meet our who pays the most i'm okay. a property investor I own a family home and two negatively geared investment properties and receive 60k a year in rent repayment. I'm a late career professional. Of course, I own my own home, but I also make additional super contributions to reduce my taxable income. I'm a wealthy retiree. I own property and shares worth $3 million. Annually, the shares generate 120k franked dividends. And I'm a young full-time worker. I'm a renter and I'm paying back a typical hex debt and I don't really have any assets. Now let's look at their total income. <laughs> so who paid the most tax? Coming in at first place is young full-time worker. Woo! Who contributed 22% of their income to society. And in last place contributing the least to society is the wealthy retiree with an effective tax rate of 0.1%. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Classic boomer. <laughs> How's it possible that young... I mean, this is really funny. I will say, in general, people who are retired... I don't know. I'm thinking I'm thinking a lot about the people I know, the ones who the are retired and less. stuff. Most of the people who are retired that I know are not wealthy. So therefore, taxing them more would... It would be like one of the meanest things you could do. But I understand in this scenario, the retiree is a millionaire. So it's a lot different. <laughs> oh boy. Effective tax rate of 0.1%. <laughs> Classic boomer. How is it possible that young people earning less pay more tax than wealthy old Australians? Well, that's because our tax system taxes income. Probably because they make the laws from working differently to the way it taxes income from assets which basically means the less assets you have the less ways you have to reduce your taxable income which doesn't seem very fair does it but there is a plan to change it and we need your help by filling out the survey mm. on think forward <laughs> okay well i'm not gonna get too political but that was interesting an early morning drive in country victoria nice look how nicely the roads are painted anyway this is very spooky. I don't know if this is literally... I assume something's going to happen here. It's only 18 seconds. I'm ready for the kangaroo. Hold on. Does someone lose a horse? That is a beautiful freaking horse. <laughs> it threw me off there for a minute that you're... I'm watching this guy drive down the left side of the road, which I know is really stupid, but that still throws me off. I could never drive in Australia. It's too many wild animals, and then to have to worry about driving on the other side of the road at the same time, no, it's a recipe for death. That's really cool, though. <laughs> Very cool. Very scary. Very cool. Live in a box for only $300 a week, folks. That's right. This property just went up for sale. 
Um, it's a one closet home. That's right. You live in a closet in someone's backyard. For just three hundred dollars a week. Holy shoot. That's my I mean, I don't even know what to say. Holy crap. That's more than I pay for in a mortgage to live in my my house here in Indiana. I mean we don't have beautiful beaches, but damn. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> oh boy. Well, so this week, honestly, not too much has changed. The people are revolting against wealth distribution, inflation, real estate prices, <laughs> and coals. It doesn't seem to be getting any better yet, folks. But I hope you guys have a good weekend. I'll see you here next week. Happy Arvo. Thank you for watching.